Okay, Brandon Amato over here again, guys. So anyway, we're now ready for part two of our reporting series, all right? Now, in the first part, what I had you do is I had you build a report, and then after that, you know, we got to see how it was done, and we built a common table report. And what we did was we expanded by rows, by rows, by rows, by rows. Okay, that was great, but let me explain something real quick. There's a best practice in reporting that you've got to remember, and I can say this from countless mistakes where I didn't realize this early on in my career, um, and it's this. And it's this, the least amount of space that it takes to display the most amount of data is better. So what that means over there is the more meaning you can give per a punch or for an area of the report, the better the report is. So what we're going to do over here, guys, is we're going to do what's called a matrix report. Now, for those of you who've done matrices or, or, done, power, or done pivot tables and whatever else, this is going to look extremely familiar. In fact, at one time, this was SSRS's solution for how to, how to essentially do pivoting within SSRS. And even today, it's still used that way in many different cases. So we're going to compare that and see how it's done and, and see how we can go ahead and utilize grouping on both the column and the row level to save space and give more meaning to users. Hope you guys love this tutorial. It's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait. Let's get started over here. See you soon. Welcome back, and this is Brandon again. Okay, now it's time for our, um, it's time for another demonstration. And this time, what we're going to do is we're going to see how to build a matrix report, right? Now, before we start, before you start thinking of some movie or whatever else, all a matrix report is 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 something where you can go ahead and actually group on the columns and on the rows. So here's what I mean. Before we always start a matrix report, we have to get an idea of what we're trying to do, right? And you commonly saw this in pivoting where you would first group by, you know, where you could group by columns and rows too and essentially get value. So just for those of you who are brand new, let me go ahead and create a dummy table over here. So there's a table just like that. Okay. Now on the table, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a couple of rows. So give it first, this first group over here, row number one. And that's going to just be my header, so that doesn't really mean much. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to give it another row. That row means something. There. Now what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to take this and I'm going to make this thing actually work. So click over here. There we go. And then I'll come back and make one more. So just add two rows over here. Just like that. Okay. Now here's my challenge over here. In our last example that we've seen, we could group by, we could, we did something called row groups. Row groups essentially allow for us to do a hierarchy like this. Like, for example, say we set country. And then what we would do is we would then turn around and actually expand the rows, right, down to say something like, say, state. So we would do a drop down right there inside the rows. And then maybe what we would do is we would come over here again and we would do another drop down. So we would come down again and do another drop down and blocked we're dropping down this way where it's moving out like this that's known as blocked by the way where we block it and it goes right out to the side and we would put one more maybe say like city and we would keep going that sort of way and what this did was the cumulative effect of doing all this was that we had a massive increase in the number of rows that was the cumulative effect When you only row group, what you get is you get a huge number of rows because you're doing those drop downs for each and every single row. Remember though, remember this fundamental rule over here. In reporting, the least amount of data is the, the least amount of data to impart the message is the best data. The least amount of data, though, required, so this broke through practice because in reporting, the least amount of data required to, to deliver the message um, is the best practice. Why is that? Because, because the least amount of data required uses the least, the, 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 um, the least amount of space. AKA using the least amount of space. 
See, think about this. Have you ever got a report that had 10,000 pages in it or something ridiculous like that? That's really hard to read. That's not what we try to do. What we try to do is we try to give, I try to teach BI people and we try to always impart that best practice, compress, compress, compress if you can, then allow people to see that data whenever they need to, to be able to actually go down to specific, you know, detailed data or whatever else. So AKA using the least amount of real estate on the report or the least amount of space on the report. So our solution over here is why not do this? Start with this sort of process. Number one, examine your groups. So examine your, examine your data first and determine groups. Okay? Number two, put the groups that have the fewest distinct values. So what that means over here is like, for example, if I have a row that has accessories and it, and it only has values of, you know, let's say, um, let's say, let's say that accessories only has the value um, of, you know, um, carrying case and tripod and that's it, then maybe that's a good candidate. So put the rows with the fewest distinct values in the top or the column groups. Put the rows that have more values in the bottom groups. Finally, at the very top level, those at, at, at the top level column group, so to speak, make sure that you have no more than eight columns at the top initially. That allows it all to fit on one page for your users whenever they want to do a printout. So very, very common sort of best practices over here. Now rows, row, row groups can have, can have lots and lots of values because they expand lengthwise for a page. But column groups over there need to be kept down to five to eight. So let's see what we're talking about. All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to start over here at the very beginning and we're going to launch Report Builder just like we did yesterday. So I'm going to click Files new document. By the way, Merry Christmas, guys. It's Christmas Day today on 2012. And I'm going to open up a report builder report right over here. All right, I'm going to click open yet again. Now, once I get that open, and let me just click run again, and I still have not had time yet to go back and finish fully um, getting my SharePoint 2013 stuff up. I've been having to do some other stuff at work, so please forgive that. There we go. And now there's a new report over here and I'm gonna click on table or matrix wizard at this point. There we go. Now what I'm gonna do over here is the first thing I'm gonna do right off the bat, right, is I'm, I'm doing a table or matrix wizard. Now let me explain the difference. Whenever you say table, you typically only have what are known as row groups, which means that what you do is you highlight rows to expand. Whenever you say matrix, what you do is you have table and you have column groups. And that's known as a tablix, which is a combination of both. So the ability to have a matrix if we need it or a table if we need it also. Here, what we're going to do is we're going to have row and, and column groups. So we're going to go back to create a data set. And let me click next so that we can choose the data we're going to bring in. Now, the very first thing that happens, right, just as we learned yesterday, is that data set just brings in all the column names and all the tables that we need to actually work with the data, right? Eventually, it becomes the set of data for the report. But during design time, at least while we're in designer, before we click preview, it's just the column names and the table names. Now, once we get past that, guys, right? And by the way, those column names are also known as fields when they come in. And we can create custom fields, as we'll see in the later tutorial. Um, once we finish getting that in, what we have to do first is we have to tell reporting services where to go retrieve the data at, right? When we tell it where to go retrieve the data, that's known as the data source. So I'm going to click New. Now, on the data source over here, I'm going to go ahead and change this to AdventureWorks Data Source. Then what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to click on I'm going to click on FX. Whoops, I'm sorry, not FX. Let me click cancel real quick over there. Sorry about that. Build, build. Ah! Okay. Now once I click on build, I'm going to click on localhost because that's where it's located on this particular server. Then I'm going to click the down arrow and just choose AdventureWorks 2012 right over here, and then I'm going to click OK. Now because I haven't finished my um, enabling Kerberos yet, I'm going to go back to credentials and then use the um, use this username and password, and then I'll just make it brandondemos.com slash bi man, my dummy username again. 
put in my little dummy password that I created just for making these labs. And I'll use it as Windows credentials for now until I have time later. Probably when I get to a BI, BI set of tutorials or something, I'll make sure it's enabled for performance point and things like that.